Welcome to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. Shep will talk with some of the smartest thinkers in business to help make you more successful in your professional and personal life. This is Amazing Business Radio with Shep Hyken. Hello, everybody. It's Shep Hyken. We're back with another episode of Amazing Business Radio. We have a great show today. We are going to dig into an interesting I guess, uh, uh, an area of customer service and experience, because we're going to be talking about the gig economy and how customer service and customer experience experts, people who are not just experts at answering questions, but actually experts in the actual products, they actually use the products and they're able to monetize their passion for those products by being part of the company's customer service team. And you wonder, how can that be? Well, we're going to find out because Megan Neal is the co-founder and chief operating officer of Limitless, which is a company that actually does what I just mentioned. Now, before we get into that, a couple of quick announcements. If you've got an amazing customer service story or a question, please reach out to me on any of the social channels. I am pretty much everywhere. If it is a question, use the hashtag AskShep. I'll either answer it there in my newsletter, maybe in this show or on my TV show, which is Be Amazing or Go Home. And that is available on Amazon Prime, Apple TV, Roku, and you can actually catch past episodes. We're now in the season three. Uh, you just go to beamazing.tv. That's beamazing.tv. And let's get into the interview. Megan Neal, welcome. All the way from London, by the way, welcome to Amazing Business Radio. Thank you so much. It's amazing to be here. Well, I love that you use that word. So here's, and by the way, when I very briefly describe what the gig CX experts do, did I do a good job? Well, as you were doing it, I was actually thinking, wow, you've nailed it. You know, that's <laughs> it. It's, it's a very different model. The one that we're used to in uh, the world of customer service, but your description was perfect. It's exactly that. For enterprise clients taking people like you and me who, who use products every day, um, love those brands that we're spending our money with, um, having the opportunity to turn that knowledge and passion into a way to earn a little bit of extra money by helping other customers just like us. Um, and it was a brainchild of, of me and my co-founder, Roger Beadle, um, over six years ago. We just thought, how can we... Uh, provide a better way of providing customer service and uh, came up with the concept, built the platform. And I'm pleased to say we're now we're thrilled to be working with amazing clients like Microsoft and eBay and HP and Samsung. And, um, you know, it, it's a wonderful place to be. So oh, I got dropping small names, small companies. Of course, they're huge. <laughs> and we all recognize <laughs> that. So uh, let me tell you what's going through my head right now. The first is um, that years ago, uh, I was I, I decided to use Salesforce as my CRM. And I remember asking the salesperson, how good is the customer support? Like, how long will it take? I'm a tiny little guy. If I have a question, is it going to take two days for it to get, them to get back to me? And they said, by the way, this has, you'll see where I'm going with this in a moment. But um, he said, just Google how do I do? And we chose some obscure question on the Salesforce CRM. And a bunch of videos came up on YouTube. What was interesting to me is they were, you know, the, the top ones were from Salesforce, but then there were also customers that decided to shoot a video to answer these questions. They weren't paid, although in the gig economy, you are paid. But the point I'm making is here were passionate customers who love the company so much that they're willing to spend time to create a video to help other customers. Apple did this. I talked about or wrote about this in one of my books that Apple would actually find evangelists. Their favorite customers would, would actually hang out in forums to answer questions. And again, they weren't paid. They were just passionate. There was always somebody from Apple there to moderate in case things got out of hand, but uh, very interesting. So that's the first thing that's going through my mind. And now we can get paid for that expertise and paid for that willingness to share experts. So if you want to dive into that a little bit more and explain exactly how that works, I think our listeners might love to hear that. Yeah, no, I certainly would love to. And of course, what you're describing there is, you know, the true essence of a community forum or a community capability that most brands now have. 
Uh, and that was one of our inspirations. You know, there are people out there in the world that do this because they want to do this. Um, what we often find, though, is that those operating models aren't truly scalable to really have an impact on uh, the way an organization delivers its customer service uh, consistently. So you, quite often you'll have a strong community, but it's not really deflecting any significant volume from the traditional call centers. So we just wanted to come up with a way where you could significantly shift 10, 20, 30 percent of the activity that your call centers are doing to a, a, a paid gig model. Um, and it's super simple. So the, the, the individuals are, are you know, invited to join the platform. Often we work with our clients to help them identify cohorts of their customer base that they feel would have demonstrated the right kind of loyalty and skill set to be um, given the opportunity to join the program. Once they've joined the program, they have to prove that they have the skills and knowledge and the brand passion to be able to help other customers. You know, this isn't a free for all. This is a back curating and building the right crowd for the brand. And once we've got to that point where we have a crowd and it could be a crowd of 50 people, it could be a crowd of 500 people, um, effectively then they're, they're using the limitless platform to receive digital inquiries. And when they receive those digital inquiries on the platform, which they can use um, uh, through a mobile app, the Limitless app, or they can just access via a web browser, effectively, then they are able to pick and choose the tickets that are right for them. And they pick and choose based on the types of questions, but also the amount that they're going to get paid. Effectively, they're signing up as freelancers with Limitless when they join uh, the Limitless community. Um, and that means that they can get paid at any time. They sign up with their PayPal account. And if they successfully resolve questions through the Limitless app, then their, their balance within the platform will increase um, depending on how many they've done in a day or in a, in a week. Um, and then they can check out at any time. So, you know, we have some wonderful examples where people are using this to top up their earnings. Uh, they are maybe saving for their kids' education, saving for the holiday of a lifetime, saving for um, you know, some form of big celebration. So the stories of the impact of these incremental earnings have on people are really powerful. And certainly now more than ever, when uh, inflation is rising, it's tough for people to find a way to cover their cost of living. Truly the gig economy, I think, is, is, is really supporting people in a time of need. So this is like Uber or Lyft for the customer service world. And if I'm a company and I'll be, you know, let's say I sell some product and I have a support center and I know high volumes are coming in, I could deflect some of this to some of our passionate users who, by the way, I assume they're properly trained. Uh, how do we train them to make sure they answer the question in the way we want them to answer the question? Yeah, no, it's, it's a great question. So it's exactly that. Um, because people are coming in with a physical experience of using the products, they have a natural set of knowledge before you even start. Um, because people are coming in at a very different skill level than you would typically find in a contact center. You know, I've run contact centers my entire career, building and operating in an outsourced environment. So my biggest challenge was attracting and retaining staff, certainly when I really only had a minimum wage to really attract them with, and, and that's not set to change anytime soon. So we really wanted to find a way where we could pay people more to attract different caliber and different skill levels into the community that we have. Um, and I'm pleased to say that, that by bringing in then uh, people from all walks of life, whether they are um, highly skilled and qualified from an academic point of view, whether they are um, uh, you know, in a, a relatively senior position at work or even semi-retired or fully retired, um, effectively, you're, you're bringing a different set of skills to the environment. So they have a native understanding of the products themselves. They are a different profile of people in large to those that I could historically recruit into my call center. And then really the only additional um, information that they need to have, these are freelancers. You, you don't train freelancers effectively. That is terminology that's used for employees. But freelancers can 
take on information and learn information that they need to do the role that they will be performing. And that tends to be around the specific processes that a client will need them to follow to fit into their uh, corporate uh, environment. So, um, but all of that can happen very quickly because of course it's a fundamentally different model to bringing mm -hmm. someone in off the street as we say and having to train them from the ground up. Maybe it's their first ever job. So the speed to competency, the, the control is all there. Um, in terms of making sure people have the skills before they go live. But the speed to competency is days, not months. And that really, for me, is one of the most exciting things, is it creates this truly agile resource pool that you can tap into. And it's doing great things in the world because it has a significant impact to these people's lives. Right. I love that. I mean, it's a part-time gig. That's what, Uber, by the way, there are Uber drivers and Lyft drivers and other you know, versions of that that are out there that make this a full-time living. And then many say, Hey, I've got free time. I'll just go on. And I love the idea that you log onto the platform and you can say, Oh, there's work waiting. Am I qualified to do this? And by the way, I want to mention to everybody listening that the uh, responses are in chat. They're not in uh, they're text based. So there it's not, there's nothing to worry about related to uh, accents or language or any issues there. It just, uh, I think that's an important piece for people to know. And I think that when I want an answer, if I can, you know, get, it doesn't matter to me how I get the answer as long as to get the answer quickly and effectively as a customer. Um, when we come back, we're going to take a short break. Uh, you mentioned some really big brands. And my question coming up is going to be, what about a little company? Is this good for them as well? So we'll talk about that and much more. And we have Megan Neal, the co-founder and COO of Limitless. And if you want to learn more about Limitless, go to Limitless Tech, T-E-C-H, LimitlessTech.com. And you can learn all about it. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Hi, Shep Hyken, your customer service and experience expert. And I'm excited to tell you about my new book, I'll Be Back, How to Get Customers to Come Back Again and Again. Now, this book is packed with idea after idea on how to, just as the title implies, get your customers to come back. In the book, you'll learn that repeat customers aren't always loyal customers. Now, both are great, but there's a big difference. you also learn about 10 reasons a customer may stop doing business with you and three reasons you would stop doing business with them. And one of my favorite lessons is a six-step process for creating an I'll Be Back strategy. Of course, there's much, much more. You'll start getting more of your customers to say, I'll be back almost immediately. Just go to www.I'llBeBackBook.com. Again, that's www.I'llBeBackBook.com. You're listening to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. We're back on Amazing Business Radio talking with Megan Neal of Limitless. And uh, so, Megan, just prior to the break, I wondered, is this for the large brands that you mentioned at the beginning are really large brands? I mean, they're great. Or can a small company, um, maybe not as small as a mom and pop, but maybe so, could they take advantage of this gig economy and specifically the Limitless platform? Yeah, great question. Um, I mean, I think the my feelings on this are that absolutely every single company um, uh, would benefit from finding a way to tap into their really passionate customers um, to bring them closer into the heart of their business. So I guess that's point number one, and that could never be a bad thing. You know, what you can learn from that close relationship with your customers to help your business um, uh, do better is phenomenal. Um, I think, you know, what we set out to do was to help big businesses do customer service better at scale, um, largely to, to benefit all three stakeholders, right? The, the end consumer demands better experiences now, and, and, and that's, uh, that's only going to set to increase. Um, my big motivation was to make uh, life better for people who are providing this service. I think it's one of the most important um, roles in the world. And when yes, you say sadly, people, you're talking uh, about the giggers. You're you're not talking about the company. You're talking yeah. about the people. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the you know what the call center agents historically, 
that I, you know, provide such a critical role to an organization's success, but typically, you know, do not get the profile or have been uh, undervalued in, in my view. And I wanted to find a way to reward them more. I wanted to find a way to genuinely um, uh, uh, tap into the skill sets that exist in the world and, and, and pay people for more for the important work they do, which, which we do. Uh, but ultimately for the organizations themselves, you know, the market is tough out there and it's getting tougher with the uh, recent macroeconomic um, climate that we have and, and organizations need to remain highly competitive, offering better customer service, but at a cheaper price. It's just, you know, it's not going to go away, that fundamental problem. So we set out to, to really address all three of those things. And so we typically operate at the enterprise side of that um, scale, because that's where we think the bigger problems are to be solved. But absolutely, the, the model should work across all business sizes. So my question a few years ago to technology companies, as we talked about artificial intelligence, was is AI going to take away the role of a customer support agent? And there's we won't go there, but that's a great, great concept. And some uh, people say, oh, yeah, it's going to take, you know, they're all going to lose their jobs. And others say there's no way it's going to happen, at least not in the foreseeable future. But does the gig economy and specifically gig CX experts, such as the ones that you are using, does that threaten the jobs of people at a support center? Yeah, I think um, the what I find really interesting is that if you talk to any um, senior leader in CX responsible for operations right now, they will tell you that actually uh, the volume of contact coming to the organization is actually increasing, not decreasing. And it's so hard whilst to keep AI up is, And it's hard to keep up. And, and the challenges they have as leaders are finding the talent and retaining the talent to support that demand in a cost-effective way. So... I, I don't see it as a replacement or displacement of people. I see it as a way to um, support the volume of engagement coming in um, and, it, and in a way doing it in the most cost effective way so that actually the leaders themselves can find a better commercial model to help them attract and retain people who are working in the more traditional model so it's a, it's a more valued uh, environment so for me it's part of a larger ecosystem it's, it's not simply you take from peter to pay paul uh, you you bring in the agile gig uh, model to support your consumer uh, experience uh, demands and expectations and take some of those savings and reinvest in a moment, I want to talk about this incredible report that you have just come out with this year. But before I do that, there's a line in my, well, so people don't realize, uh, the listeners, uh, I, you know, this is how I prep. I ask for questions. I want to know what, what talking points there are. I go out and do a little research. But something that you have in your talking points is a question. Who would you rather get customer service from? A trained customer service agent or an actual user of the product uh, who uses it day in and day out. And I already know what the answer is. You've kind of already um, answered it for me, but just let's blow this up or unpack it a little bit more. Yeah, uh, and I think some of the inspiration for what we do is just that we can see these types of environments um, or operating models uh, happening in, in retail environments, right? Where you actually have, you know, an example is the Apple Genius Bar. You know, that is powered by genuinely passionate people um, who love Apple products and you walk in and, and they are there and their eyes light up and you just feel the energy and you walk out of that store having had the most amazing experience. And we wanted to create that in the digital virtual environment uh, where you can tap into resources from all over the world with the knowledge that you have. So I'm a big believer that you people want to get help and seek advice from people like them, you know, to build that trust, to create a true connection of empathy. Um, and that's what's memorable. And those are the experiences that are genuinely going to differentiate a brand um, compared to their competitors. So for me, it's a no brainer, but I would say that. Um, and I, you know, wanted to create an environment where that was possible at scale, uh, not just on walking down the street to talk to a friend because you know mm. they've got the same phone as you, um, which is obviously equally as powerful. So I think uh, to sum that particular 
question of, we want to deliver the Apple Genius Bar experience to other industries by getting people that are passionate and because they use the product, truly experts at what they do to, to answer the questions. All right, let's flip, let's flip to uh, your report, which uh, is the 2022 Gig Customer Experience Report. Uh, share with me what you think like the most compelling stat and finding of this report. I'm looking about uh, uh, just on page 17, you know, how hiring uh, has become more difficult. And then there's the number one cause of concern regarding staffing. There's lots of great information in this. Share with me your favorite finding. I'm sure you have. I know, like my customer service report, believe it or not, my favorite finding was that 42% of customers would rather go to the dentist than call customer support. <laughs> that is really, really, really interesting. I think um, the one of the key ones for me, and I think this is the this is the one that I'm just proud of, having created Limitless from the ground up, having almost created a brand new category called Gig CX, which didn't exist a number of years ago. We've had to, you know, really help the market understand that there's a different way of doing things and 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 it is credible and it and it is fully compliant but now through the report which surveys a number of uh, senior cx leaders uh, from all over the world to be told that over 70 percent of them plan to add some form of gig talent to their customer service uh, operations over the course of the next couple of years is just something that we're incredibly proud of genuinely um, I think the other key stat for me, you know, is that the, the experts that were surveyed, they come from over 29 countries, they speak over 25 languages, uh, which again shows the breadth of skills that you can tap into in this type of model, um, is that actually the secret source to what we do is that these people are not full time, they are on average doing between eight or 10 hours a week. Um, sort of 50 to 100 or 150 uh, engagements a week through the platform, earning between five to eight thousand dollars incrementally if you're in the US, equivalent in other um, uh, in other markets. Um, and for me, it's that is what makes this special. People are doing this when they're at their best because they want to maintain their high rating scores in the platform because that means the privileges stay with them. They're not doing it um, day in, day out, when of course, uh, some of the, um, the challenges around motivation exist in the more traditional model. So for me, it's top up income, um, spreading across a huge range of individuals with different skills and uh, the diversity that naturally comes as a result of that is just something I think we're, we're deeply proud of. Well, I know you're deeply proud, especially um, when you think about it, you started something that, I mean, from the ground floor up, something that is, I think, truly uh, impacting the customer service industry. And it was new. And so we're kind of talking to a legend right now, <laughs> is how oh, I feel. Yeah. Okay, I go that far. But well, we, one we day you'll be the legend when they look excited. back and they mm -hmm. go, what, how, how did this all start? And they'll say, well, uh, Megan Neal over at Limitless, yeah. that's where it all started. All right, we're just about out of time and I like to ask a final question and I leave it completely open to you. It's what I call the one thing question. Is there one last nugget of information, one thing you wanna share with us? It can be something we haven't talked about. It could be something from the report that might be worth sharing. And by the way, you can get the report just by going to the limitlesstech.com website. Um, is that right? Uh, it's there. You can, yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Great. easy to download. Yeah. Well, just reach out to me on LinkedIn. I think the only one thing is, you know, we, we've always been a community in the CX world, right? No, no mm -hmm. matter what we're doing, I think it's a really close-knit community. And I think we all have a responsibility to try and find better ways to service our customers and to reward and recognize the people that are doing the hard work, right? Whether you're an agent in the call center or a gig CX expert on Limitless Platform or others. And we have a responsibility to make sure we are treating people correctly. We have our good gig charter, which makes sure that everything we do in our business from the platform to our operating models is focused on rewarding people fairly and giving them the appropriate control and flexibility on their own lives. So for me, that's what we should all as leaders be focusing on consistently because only through the support of those people will we truly succeed in what we want to do. 
And I love that little nugget of information because that actually transfers not just to what we do here in customer service experience, but really anybody you're working with in any position that they have, if they had the mindset that you had, uh, well, if their leadership of the company had the mindset that you had, mm-hmm. those employees, all of them would be very, very happy. Megan, thanks for being on our show. This is why we call it Amazing Business Radio. This was amazing to learn about really your incredible business. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody, that wraps it up. Another episode of Amazing Business Radio, and we will be back next week with another interview. I hope you come back. Until that time, this is Shep Hyken reminding you to always be amazing.